Yeah. Before there was a Mrs. Becker. <laughs> there was a Mr. Becker in Everly, home of the cattle feeders. Woo uh, good morning. It's great to be with you. Rialo de Medice, que liana le le matla la Jesu Christe. We greet you in the mighty name of King Jesus. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. And Mr. Becker, that's as far as my foreign language acquisition goes, because English is a language in our country. So are the slides up behind me? No, not yet. How do I get them there? It's on here. I just don't know how to get them there. So we, we are thrilled to be back. We get back here once every four years. And uh, wow, it's been quite a term, hasn't it? In the middle of that, we had um, a pandemic that shook things up. So this, many this things. Is what they see, right? Because this is what is coming next after that. So that's awesome. just your black slide before. No, no, you're you're gonna, gonna, yeah. Yeah. And those right. you'll see it up there. Too. All right, awesome. Great. So I uh, always enjoy to come back home. Bob and I got married right here at this altar 33 years ago. And uh, God is just so good and faithful. He blessed us with some kids, as you know. And when we left, they were just little, but they've grown up as kids do. Our oldest, Austin, is over there on the right with his bride, Jamie. They've been married three years. He's living his childhood dream of being a firefighter paramedic, just like Johnny from the emergency show. And uh, he's doing that in Indianola, Iowa. And Jamie is um, uh, in, the, in law enforcement and uh, waiting to get in, go to the police academy. So super proud of those kids. Over on the left, our daughter, Steph. She's 25 now and uh, is in her first semester of graduate school. And she's also a graduate assistant teaching freshman comp um, to 36 um, undergraduate students. So that's been a great challenge and she's doing super. Um, Cameron there, our youngest, sporting the Jesus hair. And uh, this is how that went down. He took a look at his dad's hair don't and he said, I've only got a few years for a hairdo. <laughs> and so he says, I'm going to do this as long as I can. I'm like, okay, all right, you go, my boy. But he's a, he's a junior in university down in Texas in the Dallas area. He's studying psychology because God has put a call on his heart to work with missionary families, specifically missionary kids. So he's building the capacity so that he can serve the missionary family globally in, in, the, in those ways. So we're just super proud of all the kids. If you would do us a favor and don't leave here without a prayer card, we have one for everyone, even the kiddos. One for everyone, because uh, we, we just covet your prayers. And we know that you're a praying church. You're a giving church, and we thank you for that. But you're a praying church. And our kids said, Mom and Dad, you don't need to put us on the back of the prayer card this year. We've been on there three times. You can just put the African kids. We know that's your calling and your passion. I said, oh, no, no, you don't understand. You guys are going on the back with your permission. They said, yes, of course. Because when you pray for missionaries, one of the best ways you can pray for us is to pray for these kids right here. If they are prospering and in good health, even as their souls prosper, we are able to run hard for Jesus and live out the calling he has on our lives. It's like we have the wind at our back when these kids are thriving. When we get a call from 8,000 miles away and there's tears on the end or just, you know, just discouragement, whatever, it's a wait. Because here in the States, we could quickly run and be there to be a present, but not from that far away, but God is always there. And as you stand in the gap for us, pray for us in our ministry, these guys first and all that we're going to share with you today, we, we treasure that. And we believe that's why we're seeing such breakthrough and such fruit in the land of our calling in Botswana and Southern Africa. So when we landed there um, 13 years ago already, the kids were just eight years old and 11 and 15. And uh, we had no idea God was gonna pull a card out of his sleeve and say, you're gonna work with kids in Africa. Did not see that coming, but he knew and he put a passion in our hearts to see a kid-friendly church within walking distance of every child kid-friendly church. So we have a couple ways that, that we do that. We partner with um, local churches to train Sunday school teachers. So we bring a, a curriculum that's contextualized for, for Africa, and we teach them how to use it. And by doing that, we're able to disciple all the kids in church on Sunday morning. But if you look around, here in America, as well as in Botswana, most children are not in church on a Sunday morning. We have a lot of work to do. But God put on our heart, Bob Evans was an educator for 20 years before he did pastoral ministry and then serving overseas, God gave us an open door to start this outreach to primary schools, gospel evangelistic ministry in the schools. 
Um, the Lord opened all the doors. Bob has written a three-year curriculum um, that to serve students. And what that looks like is they said, the government, at the request of the government, they said, church, will you please come? Our children, our primary school children are not winning on any measure. Will you come? The church stayed silent. They had no idea what to do. But for such a time as this, we were there, 2012, 11 and 12, 12, 13, and 14, as we started to develop this program. They said, you can have an hour a week to talk to kids. Yeah, no. They said, you can have 10 minutes a week. We're like, oh, what can we do with 10 minutes a week? God, what can we do with 10 minutes a week? He said, trust me, just do it. So we, um, what we do is we, we get the whole student body, 1,000 kids in front of us at a time, and Bob has written 10-minute lessons in the international language of children. Do you know what that is? Fun. If you have fun with kids, they have fun with you. And you know this very well. You do a great job with Awanas. You're having fun with kids every Wednesday night because that opens their hearts to everything we're going to share. We get them involved in a Bible story. We tell that story in four or five minutes, and then we apply it to their lives because the word without application doesn't lead to any transformation. But you apply the word of God to their hearts. How does this apply to you here at school, kids? How does Jesus want you to be at school? How does he want you to be at home when you're with your parents and your siblings and your neighbors? How does he want you to be as a citizen of Botswana? And then, it's the most amazing thing, we get to pray. We just speak Jesus over all 1,000 kids at a time and ask Jesus to come and take what we've learned in our heads and put it in our hearts. And that by doing that, we're making disciples uh, of the kids in the nation. And, uh, you know, um, when we started, we've been doing just six schools for all these years, uh, for six years six schools because we have to train leaders you see all it takes is god's people saying i'll be there i'll give an hour a week to prepare the lesson go give the lesson and come back home i'll do an hour a week so for six years we were in front of just six thousand kids but last year we had an amazing breakthrough and in just six weeks time we went from six schools to 23 schools hallelujah we're reaching 18,000 boys and girls a week with the life-changing gospel of the lord jesus christ and I tell you what, it's transformational. We don't get to hear all the stories because that's a lot of kids. There's no way we could hear every story, but we did get to hear this one last summer. This little girl, her name is Vanessa. And we first met her at Botsalano Primary School, just a school that's just five minutes from our house. Bob goes there every Wednesday. And uh, Vanessa was a, a student there. And one week he taught about Jonah. And Vanessa said, oh, I don't want to be a Jonah. I don't want to run away from God. So when Bob said, "Who boys and girls, who wants to ask Jesus into your heart? Vanessa said, I asked Jesus into my heart that day. Hallelujah. He saved her. So then we always teach the boys and girls, you can talk to God anytime about anything. If it matters to you, it matters to God. And so Vanessa had a big problem, and that was she was a, her mom was a single mom, lots of kids, no job, no idea where the next meal was going to come from. And so she said, I could talk to God about this. She got down on her knees, she said on a Tuesday, went into a room of her house and she said, God, my mom needs a job, will you please give my mom a job? And then she waited. Four hours, phone rings. It's a guy on the phone talking to her mom saying, um, I need someone to work full time for me at my factory in the village, would you be willing to work full time? And by the way, I've got a house there right on the property, your whole family could stay, would that be all right? Wow, Vanessa knew right then and there that God had heard her prayer. You really could talk to God anytime about anything. And so now he, he saved her. Now he's gonna deliver her family from poverty. But God wasn't done with Vanessa. Still not done, still working, always will be. We, we met up with her last summer because you see that, that job may, meant she had to move from her house in the, near us, in our suburb, to a village 45 minutes away. But at the time, we were in just those six schools. Only five of them were right around the city. One of them, we were only in one village of the thousands of villages in Botswana. But which village do you suppose we were in? The very one that Vanessa moved to. And there's two primary schools in that village, each with a thousand kids. Bob only goes to one of them every Friday morning. Which one did Vanessa end up at? Yes, the school he's at. So she got to continue to hear Pastor Bob give the, the lessons about Jesus and how it applies to our lives. And so last summer, 
we were doing a kids crusade out in the village, partnered with the local church, put up our tent, had some sound equipment, puppet stage, giant inflatables, all the things we do to have fun with kids. And um, we hand out flyers at the school so they, the kids know where to go, where to come, where is it at, and they can get to the tent for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So Vanessa got there, but it wasn't easy for her to get there because in April, she fell out of a tree, just being a kid playing, but she fell out of a tree and landed on her right side and messed this all up so much that she went from being an active kid to an inactive kid. She was in too much pain. She couldn't play with her friends anymore. And medically, they had done all for her that they were gonna be able to do. But she wanted to make sure she was in that tent, so she got there. So we give them a lesson on Friday. We ask the boys and girls, it's a salvation message. He wants to get saved. About 250 kids in the tent spilling out through the sides. And then I'm at the piano at the end, leading the kids in worship because we want them to know they can get into his presence anytime, anywhere. We're gonna leave, but Jesus is always here. I'm at the piano doing something like hallelujah, hallelujah, because there's no language barrier with that song, and just having the kids worship Jesus. And I felt the Holy Spirit say, ask if anybody needs a healing, because our Jesus heals. He did it, I saw him do it to my dad when I was nine years old, miraculously healed his back. I know my Jesus heals. And I said, okay, I'll ask. And if you ask kids, everybody raises their hand. My nose is running, my toe hurts, my finger hurts, you know. They always do that, and that was fine. They thought Jesus can handle all that. But this day, none of the kids raised their hand. I just waited for a few 15, 20 seconds, and then one little girl comes all the way from the back and stood right in the front of me. I'm at the, at the piano playing, had our team come around her and begin to pray for her. She came back the next day, all smiles. She said, let me tell you what happened. She said, as soon as you, they all put their hands on me and started to pray, all the pain left my leg. But I didn't want to say anything because I was afraid it wouldn't last. But I went home and I said, Mom, look what happened. Mom, they prayed for me. And look, my leg doesn't hurt anymore. Look, Mom. And her mom goes, wow, we're going to go to that church. So you see, in a simple 10-minute lesson where the transformational gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is preached, she was saved, delivered, Hallelujah. That ought to get an amen out of somebody. <laughs> he said, Vanessa, is there anything else you want to share with us? She looked right at Bob. She said, Pastor Bob, I don't know why you would leave your country and come to my country. I don't know why you would leave the city and come to my village and my school to tell us about Jesus. But I'm so glad you did. First Baptist, we're so glad we did too. And this story is our story all together because we don't get to do that without your partnership. When you give, when you write that check, when you swipe the debit card, however it is we give these days, you're sending it up to the Lord in heaven and he's sending it back to us, to those kids, these transforming families, kids, families, teachers. Wow, what an honor, what an honor. So um, that's Vanessa's story and we've been praying we need it in order for this thing to last. It's a, you have to have a national champion who gets it, who has a fire in their heart, because we can't be there forever. We will leave at some point, but we want this ministry to continue. And so we've been praying for six years that God would raise up a national champion who can run with this and lead the ministry. God raised up this man, Mr. OG, Ohona Shoswani. He says, just call me OG. Thank you, thank you very much, that's easier. And um, God has given him a national vision to see gems in every primary school. That's our vision, and he caught it. And uh, it's God's vision, because God loves kids more than anything. He loves kids so much. And so there's 805 primary schools. So Mr. OG said to us, he said, when you're in America this year, will you ask the church to pray specifically that God will help us to double from 23 schools to 50 by the end of this year? by December 2023, that we'll double. And then if we double every year after that, by 2027, guys, that's only four years away, through the multiplication. I went to public school too, Lewis, and did math, and that's how it worked, if you do the numbers. I was in Sunday school this morning. We were talking about old school. Anyway, uh, by 2027, through the power of multiplication, we'll be in every primary school reaching 750,000 students with the life-changing gospel of Jesus. 2027 all things are possible with our God and so we are super excited to get to get back um, it'll be in the first part of the year we're not exactly sure it all depends on as our budget comes together so pray with us for that that God will call the partners that he wants to be with us and um, he's, he's faithful and he's doing it but these things just 
take some time. So we'll be getting back on the ground there in the first part of 2024 at some point. But um, Mr. OG is doing a fantastic job. We're in touch with him every week. And uh, he just sharing transformational stories of what's happening. And um, thank you so much for giving us these moments to share with you and for your partnership and for celebrating with us all that God is doing as we work together to bring the lost to him. So they can be loving our Jesus too, just like we sang in that last song. Amen. First Baptist, it's great to be with you. Thank you so much for allowing us to be here. Thank you so much for your partnership. As my wife said, as Barb said, this is a partnership and we definitely see it that way. These aren't our stories, these are our stories. And uh, so, so be encouraged this morning. Pastor Tyler, thank you for, for allowing us to be here today. And, and uh, uh, schedule, just a thing in our schedule opened up very quickly and, and gratefully everything worked out. So we're so thankful to, uh, to be with you this morning. Barb shared with you, you know, the exciting things that uh, we've been seeing happen. And in a few moments, I want to share a, a, another testimony with you of, of what God has been doing. We, we see great things happening going from about five, 6,000 students a week to 18,000 students. But the thing that grips our heart and, and that is still before us is even though those students are, are receiving God's transforming truth, there's still a vast number that have not received, that are still walking in darkness and still have not heard about Jesus Christ. In Botswana today, there are 750,000 children under the age of 15. So if we're touching only 18,000, we don't even have a tithe. We don't even have half a, half a tithe of the entire population of children. And we know that this work is not done yet. And so we are praying for laborers to be raised up, to be sent out uh, for, for Mr. OG. And when we return to help him, to help him train and equip those leaders. But it goes beyond that. On the continent of Africa today, there are, there are well over 480 million children. Statisticians tell us that by the year 2030, there will be 500 million children on the continent, all under the age of 15. Now put that in perspective, the U.S. today only has about 330 million. So about one and a half times the population of, uh, of the U.S. is children on the continent, most of whom have not heard. And so we know that there's a great task that's before us. But our God is not bothered by those things, is he? He's not bothered because his word is irrefutable. His word tells us that, that, that his promises are true. And we see them playing out in our lives as we studied in Sunday school. We see God's hand moving through, through our lives. And he raises up the laborers as we call out to him and as we do our part. I believe that there is a fresh anointing in the midst of all of the, of all the uncertainty and all of the, uh, everything going around us, the chaos that's taking place in the world today. I believe that the Holy Spirit also has placed a fresh emphasis and a fresh anointing on the Great Commission. And I want to take that out of uh, Mark chapter 16 today. In Mark chapter 16, starting in verse 15, we know these words well. Most of us can recite it from memory. But in Mark, he says, go into all the world and preach the good news to everyone. Anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved but anyone who refuses to believe will be condemned. These miraculous signs will accompany those who believe. They will cast out demons in my name and they will speak in new languages. They will be able to handle snakes with safety and if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. They will be able to place their hands on the sick and they will be healed. When Jesus is giving these words, we have to ask ourselves, where's our goal? 
And the answer, first and foremost, is our goal is wherever we find ourselves, isn't it? Jerusalem, Judea, to the ends of the earth, Acts tells us. And Spencer becomes, when we lived in Spencer, Spencer was our goal. Wherever we find ourselves becomes our goal. That's where we're to shine God's light and live it out for him. Being his witnesses. And then he says, anyone who believes and is baptized will be saved. Who's anyone? Well, that's anyone, isn't it? There isn't any, there isn't any category that he says, no, not this group of people, not that group of people, not that race, not that creed, not that color. Anyone who believes and is baptized. Why does he include that, and is baptized? Because Jesus said, you'll show that you love me by following my commands. That's what Jesus said. So, so I, I demonstrate my love for him by taking his commands and, and following them. I know I can't do it perfectly. I'm going to go and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go back and repent for when I mess up. But at the same time, when I, when I sin, I can come to Jesus. He'll forgive me. He says anyone that is trying to do that will be saved. It will be saved. Baptism is that first step of obedience. That's why he starts with baptism. It's that first step in our, our journey of walking with the Lord. And then we continue to follow him from there. And then he continues on. He says, with that, I'm not just sending you out there with this message. But I'm going to give you the power that you need to, to carry this message out. The power that comes from the gospel of Jesus Christ and the spirit of, that is flowing through, through this, this word. He tells us that, that we have power over the demonic realm. We don't have to fear what's taking place in the demonic realm. Why? Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And so when we stand on the truth of God's promises and we walk these promises out, the power and the authority of God is in us and through us as we shine his light. He continues on and he says, they will be able to handle snakes with safety. And if they drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Well, what is he talking about there? He's not talking about becoming snake handlers. He's not saying bring snakes in the church and, and do funny things like that. But you know that in our culture today, and in the world today, we don't have to go very far. <laughs> we don't even have to. We can barely go outside of these doors. And there are threats of people that want to, that want to cancel us, that want to malign us, and literally do away with us, those of us that follow Christ. And Jesus said... No, you're going to be able to handle these snakes that want, to, that want to attack you and destroy you. I believe what he's meaning here is I'm going to give you wisdom to know how to handle and refute those challenges that come across to us. Those things that, 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 that even threaten the very foundations of our faith. He's going to give us wisdom how to, how to walk through that so it doesn't destroy us. And then he says, if you drink anything poisonous, it won't hurt them. Well, what's the world dealing with today? With all of the unrest, with everything that's taking place, and, and we're listening to these horrible reports on the news. What happens is the uncertainty of our, our future is things that, that, that could be shaken and, and are, are being shaken. Our security is being rocked in, in a lot of areas. And it, create, it, it can create, if our, if our belief system is not firmly rooted on God's word, if our faith is not in him, it's going to cause worry. It's going to cause doubt. It's going to cause that anxiety to rise within us. And that doesn't attack us and kill us from the outside. It comes from the inside out, doesn't it? But Jesus said, don't, don't worry, don't be afraid. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. His promises are yes and amen. They are true. 
And so as we continue to, to, to walk in this, and then the final thing he says is, is we'll be able to place our hands on the sick. We can pray that prayer of faith, and Jesus can heal. We know that he chooses not to heal everyone. But that's not up to me, is it? It's not up to us. That's up to him. My portion, my part, is to pray that prayer of faith and say, Lord, I know that you can heal. Will you heal this? Will you heal that? And continue to walk in, in his grace and in his truth. In 2019, I was substitute teaching at, at the Bible school across the street from us. As I was teaching that night, just before I got started through the door, came a young man. His name was Tomello. Tomello walked right up to me and said, Pastor Bob, do you, do you remember me? I said, no, you're going to have to help me. He said, well, do you still tell the boys and girls about Jesus? He said, I do that Monday through Friday. I go to the public schools every day. He said, you started in my school in 2014. He was right. He said, when you came to my school, I was a fifth grade teacher. But what you didn't know about me was even though I was the one that lined up all the children for you, I made sure all the assembly was ready to go, I was also a drunk. My practice was I would get up in the morning, I had a seven year old boy, I'd drop him off in second grade, I would go on teach fifth grade, at the end of the day, I'd come back, pick up my son, take him to take him home, and I'd go to the bar. But you start telling my, those Bible stories, and my little boy fell in love with those stories. He would come home at the end of those days, and he would run up to his mother, and I would say, Mommy, Daddy, get out the Bible. I love these Bible stories. I want to hear more Bible stories. Read, read more stories to me. Well, two months pass. Now it's August 22nd, Friday night of 2014. Tamela said, I came home from the bar that night. I was already drunk. But when I opened the door to my house, there stood my family. They said, the church down the street, they're, they're having a crusade. We want to go. Will you take us to that crusade? He said, I thought, I'm drunk, but... I'll help my family. So he puts him in the car, and this drunk driver is driving his family to church. On the way to the church, a seven-year-old boy turns to Tomello. He says, Daddy, you need to stop drinking. And he starts sharing with his father the pain, the heartache that their family is walking through because of his choices. They get to the church. Tamela said, I pulled up outside the church. I pulled up outside the gate because I wasn't going in. I was just dropping them off. I'd purchase more alcohol. I was going back to the bar. But now the little boy's pleadings turn to sobs. His shoulders are shaking. There are tears streaming down his cheeks. He was inconsolable, and Tamela said in that moment, I thought, what kind of father am I? I'm causing this kind of pain in my little boy. So he said, I bent over, I picked him up, I carried him into the church, and sat on the back pew because I smelled like alcohol. But you know the Holy Spirit doesn't care about things like that. The, the power of the gospel doesn't, isn't threatened by alcoholism. And that night, God touched his heart, and Tamelo gave his heart to the Lord. He said, I went home that night, and I stayed up all night, thinking about the choices that I'd made in my life. Thinking about the choice that I made that night. When he got up the next morning, he went right to his car. He poured out all the alcohol he had purchased, and now he starts... He's, he starts leading his family to the church. The church embraces the family. The pastor takes Tomello under his wing, disciples him. 
And in a few short years, as Tamello has grown so much in his faith, he becomes a leader in the church. He becomes a member of the church board. In 2018, as he's continuing to lead his family and walk with the Lord, he hears the Lord whisper to him, Tamello, I want you to be my pastor. And so Tamello enrolls in Bible Bible school, and that's what he was doing in my class in 2018 or 2019. Last year, December 10th, 2022, Tamela received his diploma. He's a pastor in Botswana today. A family saved, family delivered, a family healed. But a seven year old boy who hears the gospel and the Holy Spirit and the power of the gospel touches that little boy's heart and gives him the boldness and the courage to be able to confront a wayward father. And God and his power, his transforming work take place in this family. These are just a couple of stories that my wife and I know about personally that we don't get to hear all of them. But these are some stories that, that you and I share together as we are reaching these children. Some of it spilling across the borders into other countries in Africa. They're asking for this curriculum. They're asking for what we're doing. And you're a part of this. Thank you so much for your generosity. Thank you for so, so much for what you're doing, but I also want to encourage you today. Take courage, church. Take courage. God is with you. In this hour in the United States, when it is so challenging, this is, uh, some people ask us, what's it like coming back into the U.S.? Well, for a while it was nice because it was coming home, but now we can almost hardly recognize home when we return. It's changed a lot. But our God is not, he is, doesn't change, does he? He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is with us today. He is with you today. And the same message for, for us today and for this world today is what we give in Botswana. Every person matters. Every person. Why? Genesis 1 and Genesis 2 still apply. We are all made in the image of God. Everyone is made in the image of God. What does that mean? It means that every time we look at somebody, every time we interact with somebody, every time we're looking in the mirror, we're seeing a piece of God. Each one of us are his image bearers. Whether we recognize it or not, whether we admit it or not, that truth cannot go away. And that makes every person valuable. It makes everyone here valuable. And God wants all people to be saved. All people. God is for us. So who can be against us? Take courage. May God richly bless you as you continue to walk with him. And, and live out your faith in Spencer in this region. God is for you. And he's going to use you to reach those that have yet to hear. For those that need to know. He loves them. He cares about them. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, I want to thank you so much for your faithfulness. And I want to thank you so much for, for First Baptist. I thank you so much for their partnership with us. And Father, you are with them. Leading them and guiding them. And I pray that you will bless them during this pastoral search. You will bring your pastor here. Father, we know the challenges that are there, but Father, you are not bothered by challenges. You know who already has to be standing in this pulpit. And Father, we just pray that you will bring them forward. In your timing, you will call them here. Bless and encourage this congregation. Father, may they stay united and strong 
as you lead them and guide them clearly. Bless the leadership. Fill them, Father, with your, with, your, with your confidence and with your peace as you guide them through this process. And Father, through all of this, may your name be glorified and praised. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. And Lord, I can't end this morning without just saying this as we continue to pray to you. Father, there may be somebody here this morning and they have heard this message today, and they've seen how you work, and they realize it's for them. It's for them. And Father, they know that there is sin in their life that is separating them from you. But this morning, they want to make a decision to follow you, to ask you to forgive them, and to commit their life to follow you in obedience. And so, Father, I pray that you will touch that heart this morning. Father, as heads are bowed and eyes are closed, I don't know everyone in, this, in, in this, this sanctuary today, but you do. And it's a personal matter between each one of us and you. Once you keep your heads bowed and once you keep your eyes closed. But if that's you today and you want to make that decision for Jesus... Maybe you're online and you're watching in your living room. You're realizing that Jesus died for you. He placed, he places high value on you because you look, because you bear his image. You look like God. And he wants to give you the fullness of life that only he can give. It comes no other way. It's only through Jesus. And so if that's you this morning, just where you are, your response to God, and you're responding to God, you're not responding to me, you're not responding to a church, you're responding to God. I'm just going to ask you just to, like I said, heads bowed, eyes closed, but just slip your hand up to God. Put your hand up and say, and by slipping your hand up, you're saying, God, this is me. I need you. It's just that physical follow through saying, God, I need you. If that's you this morning, just slip it up. If you're watching at home or wherever you're watching, there you can slip it up where you're at as well. God loves you. If you have your hand up, you can put it back down again. But let's say this prayer together. A prayer of confession before the Lord. For those that have raised their hand, we'll say it all together. Say it from your heart. The Lord hears your prayer. Say, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. I'm a sinner. I've done wrong. Please forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Help me live for you, starting right now. Thank you for loving me. Help me to love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, I thank you for anyone that prayed that from their heart today. You heard that prayer. And now the old is gone, the new has come. We are grateful for your faithfulness. We are grateful for your goodness. And I thank you for this new life. Bless and encourage each one. Your promise is when your word goes forth, we heard it in Sunday school today, and it's true. It's out of Isaiah 55. When your word goes forth, it does not come back void. It always achieves the purpose for which it is sent. Always. It always bears fruit. So we thank you for that promise. We thank you for this time together. Bless us now for the remainder of this time this morning and be glorified in every heart and every life as we continue to live for you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for allowing us to be with you. As my wife said, please pick up a prayer card. If you want to stop by your table, uh, table and visit a little bit, we'd love to visit with you. But thank you.